let's uh, talk to uh, Conservative commentator Connor Tomlinson. Good morning, Connor. You just can't seem to get rid of me, can you, Kevin? <laughs> uh, I love to have you on because I know you, because well, you've uh, campaigned on green issues before yourself. Uh, and this is a message being sent to the nation uh, that it's oh, we have to not go travel all over the world. We have to be very careful with how much carbon emissions we're responsible. But the climate minister apparently doesn't. 30 countries in the last seven months, uh, only recently... Uh, he's been in Bangladesh. He's in South Africa right now. I mean, this is, as the Mail quite rightly puts it on its front page this morning, the height of hypocrisy, isn't it? Well, personally, I'm just impressed someone has worked out the traffic light system for long enough to be able to have a bloody holiday. I need to get a Dulux paint chart out to figure it out personally. <laughs> but um, I, I, I think the problem we have, though, as a sort of the punditry sphere, is that we level these charges of moral inconsistency at them. But they don't particularly care because it's not so much about moral inconsistency. It's that they've presupposed that they know what's good for us. Yeah. And if they can do that through, they don't necessarily have to abide by it. And he's not the first, not being funny. We saw Greta doing it when she was going to go on her sailing trip around the world. We saw Leo DiCaprio do it after he put out a climate change documentary. Bill Gates is so obsessed with it. He keeps telling people we need to drink recycled feces water. <laughs> but he's the leading emitter of uh, private jet emissions every year. So it, it's, it's clearly a sort of massive class divide. And it's in the political sphere as well it's endemic of the washington westminster brussels bubble where they think it's fine we know what's good for you but we don't have to abide by that that's for the plebs i would say uh, that boris uh, and indeed his government have a tin ear about this because uh, the british people will put up with quite a lot uh, we're quite a stoic bunch really uh, but the one thing that will enrage Brit Brits, long-suffering Brits, is the idea that uh, there are different rules for the privileged politicians uh, than there are the rules for the rest of us. Uh, this is an unfair situation uh, and uh, the people of this country will not like it. That's one of the main things that broke down the lockdown policy, as you said, with Matt Hancock. A lot of people sort of woke up and realised, oh, they don't really care about this, so why the hell have I been wearing a mask and sitting indoors for 17 months? I'm just going to go out and live my life. And the... The, the problem with the climate policy is, even in the first place, a lot of the way it's phrased, people won't particularly care about your uh, sort of pseudo-religious scheme. As you said, one, if you can't get China on board, then they're responsible for most of the emissions. We, if we hit net zero by 2050, which is looking increasingly infeasible, by the way, because if you have a look at these policies, dear God, they're, they're written by monkeys with typewriters. There's so many glaring holes in them, it's embarrassing. And I'm an idiot from my bedroom and I can spot it. So it's pretty worrying that they're either leaving a bunch of stuff out or there's, a there's I don't know what's more concerning, that they're lying or there's a few hundred researchers in Westminster that don't know what they're doing. Um, but it's, the, the, the issues I would say, uh, for example, okay, so I'll, I'll give a couple of examples here because otherwise it's, it seems pretty abstract. Go the ahead. government put for a national tree strategy and they said, uh, we're going to do loads more trees on, on public land and whatnot. But they didn't say 80% of these trees are built on private land. So they've offered no incentives for the, for the people there. I was in a call with one of the ministers and they said, oh, why do we need to offer incentives when we can just make it illegal? I mean, that just shows, <laughs> doesn't it? And then they another one that, was the electric they? car <laughs> thing. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, there was, there's, there's no second, second hand electric car market. Every country in the world's using all this battery capacity. Yeah. Trying to get all the lithium for it is, is using child labor. And then how the hell, so if you want to do a fully renewable grid, we're going to need the world's battery capacity from now till 2028, just for the UK, yeah. as we're doing electric cars as well. Yeah. And as all these Paris Accord countries are also doing it at the same time. So you tell me how we're going to meet the target, not only by 2038 that they keep bringing it back to, or 2050, but by 2100 at this rate. Yeah. But also Connor, if we uh, do reach this uh, difficult target of uh, zero carbon emissions uh, by 2050, uh, it won't matter. We only uh, produce 2%, less than 2% of the world's pollution. Nothing we do in this country will make a blind bit of difference to the ecology of the world. Uh, we have to get China, India, Russia and Brazil on board uh, if we were to, to achieve anything. None of those countries uh, show any indication that they're particularly interested. China isn't go even going to COP26, and it doesn't even look like it's going to uh, send to COP26 its plans to tackle the environment, because it doesn't care about the environment. It cares about cheap energy for its people, and coal-fueled power stations provide cheap energy. They're laughing at us, and they are not going to to go oh look 
Britain's showing a virtue signalling lead on this. We must follow suit. They're just laughing at us. Well, I'll push back slightly just because I would say if we can become some sort of world leader in the technological solutions that are economically viable, then we can export that around the world and make a fair bit of money after the post-Brexit trade deals and, and whatnot. And COVID have left us in a weird position. The problem is the policies that we're doing, we're not taking a market-based approach. We're taking a controlled economy approach. That's why I find it very funny that Boris came out the other day and said, oh, it, it's brilliant for environmental reform that Maggie Thatcher closed all the coal mines. I mean, first of all, she didn't exactly do it in a great way because she didn't uh, leave much in the way of uh, alternative investment incentives for the towns that she completely depleted of their lives and livelihoods but also the idea that maggie thatcher wouldn't be sprinting in her grave and i'm no thatcherite personally uh that that the government has created they're pricing you out of your cars they're pricing you out of your energy with the off gym bills massively increasing mm. uh, we're going the way of germany in terms of brownouts so of where we're going completely off coal and then we're buying funnily enough all of the uh, our oil we get since the north seas massively depleted. we're buying from qatar by the way so it's really funny that all of our government industries want to do pride month when mm. they haven't exactly got the best human rights records have they no. um and and then we're uh uh sorry i've been completely well, they're, 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 <laughs> we we you know, the, the other thing is basically in terms one of the measures, for example, you know, people will not be ripping out their gas boilers and replacing them yep. with hydrogen boilers. People uh, cannot afford to replace their petrol cars by 2030 yep. with this expensive electric cars. It, basically, this is a bunch of rich Tory cabinet ministers who have no idea about the economics for normal people. Uh, and now we learn that uh, one of the rich cabinet ministers, uh, Alok Sharma, uh, is riding roughshod over everything that an environmentalist should stand for and that by going to 30 countries in seven months. People aren't going to accept this message when uh, they're not practicing what they preach, are they? No, and it, it's funny you say that they don't have any idea of the cost of normal people. I'd say actually they do, because when, uh, as it's been discussed on talk radio before, whenever this has been brought up, when the ministers keep dodging questions about it, when it was voted on a, as to whether the commitment should be taken on the Commons floor, there was no discussion about cost. But then when Sunak goes on Andrew Neil's GB News show, they talk about the cost being up to a trillion. And his answer was, oh, well, I'm a fiscal conservative because I know it's not my money that I'm spending. And it's like, <laughs> oh, fantastic. I'm, I'm really right. glad you're being... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like a mugger in an alleyway taking your wallet and going, don't worry, mate, I'll spend it wisely. I, well, you know who I think would spend it wiser? Me, funnily enough. So why don't you stop taking my money and spend it on harebrained schemes? And the problem when you create a totalizing system of government policy is the only people that end up paying for all of the errors, which are already in the papers that I've read and will undoubtedly be more errors as the policies expand, are the taxpayer. And we're going to be stuck for the hook of all of these schemes when they go south. Couldn't agree more. Thank you, Connor. Uh, always a pleasure. We'll talk again soon. Connor Tomlinson there, Conservative commentator.